And we start with breaking news. Russian authorities say that Wagner boss Yevgeny Prigozhin has most likely been killed in a plane crash. The mercenary group's chief was on the was on the passenger list of a private jet that crashed en route to St. Petersburg from Moscow. Authorities say all 10 people on board were killed. In June, Prigozhin's fighters had launched an aborted attempt to take Moscow after taking over the regional capital Rostov-on-Don. The Wagner Group fought a brutal battle for several months to take the Ukrainian city of Bakhmut. Now let's go straight to DW's Russia bureau chief Yuri Reshetu joins us from Riga because DW is being banned from reporting in a Russia. Yuri, what more do we know about this crash? Was Prigozhin really on that plane? Well, the aircraft was flying over the village of uh, Kuzhenkino, near the larger Russian city of Tver in central Russia. Um, it's believed to have been a military aircraft um, belonging to Prigozhin himself. Uh, ten people were killed, you said it, uh, Gerhard, according to the Russian civil protection, three of whom are believed to be crew members and... One of the passengers, of the seven passengers, killed apparently Wagner mercenary chief Yevgeny Prigozhin. At least that's what Russian news agency are reporting with reference to the Russian aviation watchdog Ros Aviatsiya. Uh, the plane was reportedly on its way from Moscow to St. Petersburg. Um, a telegram channel which is close to Prigozhin or was connected to him, uh, reports that uh, the crashed plane allegedly was shot down by Russian air defense. But this, as I said, uh, is a far a single report from one of Prigozhin's telegram channels. Uh, there is no official confirmation of this uh, information, Gahad. Mm, it, it, but it does not sound uh, totally unlikely. Prigozhin did cross a line with President Vladimir Putin <coughs> when he led that mutiny a few months ago. Could this be more than an accident? Sure, it may well be that this crash wasn't a tragic accident. Why? Uh, let's think who was Yevgeny Prigozhin so far. Uh, he started as Putin's cook, then later he was used as Putin's favorite for the Kremlin all over the world to fulfill military political tasks, let's say so, that is in simple terms to secure and increase Russian influence with weapons in Syria, uh, in Africa, and finally in Ukraine. So this person became very important for the Kremlin, so important that he was even allowed to act outside the law. He recruited, for example, Russian prisoners for his mercenary force in Ukraine. Those men got freedom for fighting for him in Ukraine. First of all, at Bakhmut, you said it, uh, without a court, without a presidential decree. So this person, Evgeny Prigozhin, who was allowed very much more, one day became so powerful, obviously, that he became extremely inconvenient for the Kremlin. And on top of that, he started criticizing the defense minister, the Russian tactics in Ukraine, and he even dared publicly and very loudly to doubt the sense of the war. Now, the Wagner Group, it is a kind of a center of gravity, uh, if you will, in, uh, in, in the Russian apparatus there. Uh, what, where does, should he really be dead? Where does that leave the Wagner Group? Well, uh, well uh, I think that uh, um, it's um, clear that uh, the, the days of Wagner group, uh, of Wagner Prigozhin uh, group is uh, now counted. We don't know what will happen to this group now, but I can imagine that it will no longer exist as a fighting force. Uh, many of the former soldiers uh, have signed the agreement with the Ministry of Defense. It may well be that the days of the Wagner mercenaries are finally over now. DW's Russia Bureau Chief Yuri Resheto there. Thank you very much, Yuri. Now, as we've been hearing, Brigozhin led a short-lived rebellion in June against Russia's conventional army. Thousands of mercenaries took up weapons and marched from southern Russia towards Moscow with the aim of toppling the country's military leaders. The mutiny ended with a deal. Here's more now on what was the most serious challenge ever to Vladimir Putin's system. For a few hours, it looked like Yevgeny Prigozhin posed a real threat to Russian President Vladimir Putin's hold on power. 
The world watched in suspense as Prigozhin's Wagner mercenary group seized control in Rostov-on-Don, one of southern Russia's biggest cities, and then advanced north toward the capital, Moscow. Then, several hours later, Prigozhin suddenly called off the operation. He said he wanted to prevent bloodshed and that his intent was never to overthrow the government. Right up until the mutiny, Prigozhin was seen as a loyal ally of the Kremlin leader. After serving a prison sentence for robbery, Prigozhin worked his way up to a successful restaurant owner in St. Petersburg, earning him the nickname Putin's chef. Eventually, it led to catering contracts for the Russian government. His next business venture was quite different, though. Founding a private militia known as the Wagner Group in 2014, the same year Russia illegally annexed Crimea from Ukraine. Prigozhin also established a media group, including a troll factory. The United States and other countries accused it of trying to interfere in elections. After Russia's full-scale invasion of Ukraine faltered, Prigozhin began hiring thousands of soldiers, including convicts, to fight in Wagner units, aiding the Kremlin's war effort. Their perhaps biggest triumph was taking the eastern Ukrainian city of Bakhmut after months of fighting in which Russia's regular army had been unable to prevail over Ukrainian forces. But as Prigozhin found himself more and more in the spotlight, he used it to rail against Russia's military leadership and its conduct of the war, including the accusation it was not providing his mercenaries with ammunition. Prigozhin's feud with the civilian leadership escalated when he refused to let his fighters be put under defense ministry command. And so Prigozhin launched what he called a march for justice. We came here to put an end to the disgrace of our country. This here is a first step. What we're doing is right. It's to save Russia. In Moscow, a shocked Vladimir Putin called it treason, a stab in the back in the middle of war. Any internal turmoil is a deadly threat to our statehood, to us as a nation. This is a blow to Russia, to our people, and our actions to protect the fatherland from such a threat will be tough. With his mutiny aborted, Prigozhin left Rostov on Don to cheering crowds. But the weekend of chaos had left a precarious future for himself and his Wagner empire. In the days that followed, President Putin embraced his supporters, trying to project strength after Prigozhin's extraordinary challenge to his rule.